Hello everyone, it's Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today we're here with another video review. Generally we do an unboxing, then actually look at the review and then look at a little bit of the benchmarks, but today it's not as simple as that. Uh, AMD have blessed us with the new 7000 series cards. Obviously we've already looked at the 7950 and the 7970, uh, but the next ones in the pipeline are the 7700 series. Now what these are really going to offer is a sort of replacement for uh, older generation cards by offering new architecture on 28 nanometer technology as well as offering a, a better price point really. Um, so there's two cards that we've got and this whole video now is going to focus on the lower end of the two which is the 7750 which is this card I've got right here. Now straight away you can see it's a very very low profile, very very small card. So we're going to have a look at that, we'll go through all the specs and things like that and then we will have another video as well as uh, obviously written reviews for both of these cards with the 7770 which is the world's first 1 GHz card. But I don't really want to focus on that in this video, that is entirely for another video. <coughs> now in terms of the 7750 uh, it's basically aimed to be a graphics card for everyone. Now when they say everyone, they seriously do mean everyone. Anyone who's got a PCI Express slot, because it doesn't need any power, which we will show you, there's no external power needed from your power supply, and it's got all of the relevant connections that the majority of users are gonna want or need. It's also gonna give you, you know, okay performance. They've sort of tried to pit it against certain Nvidia cards, and obviously they're, they're trying to aim it at um, a replacement card for people who've got you know, older cards such as the 5770 which to this day is still the number one DirectX 11 selling graphics card in the world. So the 5770 was a great success for AMD and they're really trying to sort of develop on that success by offering something a little bit different with the uh, 7750 and the 7770. So very, very like-minded cards, um, just obviously with different price points. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you off of the tripod, have a look at the 7750, sort of have a quick look around it, which I warn you, there isn't a lot really to it uh, because of obviously there's no extra power needed, no crossfire um, directly on the card or anything like that. But we can go through the specs and sort of you know tell you a little bit more about the card, and then we can look at some of the benchmark results that we've got and show you how it compares against other cards on the market, such as the GTX 560, uh, even some lower spec cards like the 6450, and where it sort of sits in comparison to the new 7000 series cards with the 7950. And obviously you can base your, uh, your own opinions on how that's going to be sort of price per performance because obviously the 7950 and the 7970 are still uh, quite expensive cards, uh, it has to be admitted. But this is uh, going to be in a completely different ballpark. So um, if you're expecting you know, high performance, extreme performance, go check out the 7950 and 7970 stuff because this isn't going to be for you. But if you are sort of the mainstream user, budget to mainstream user, and you want uh, a card that really works and just does what it's set up to do, but is at a good price point and offers, you know, mainstream performance, then this is going to be something uh, worthwhile. So uh, keep uh, keep watching and uh, we'll go straight into having a look at the AMD Radeon 7750, which is codenamed Cape Verde. So guys, this is the first look at the Radeon HD 7750. Now straight away you can see that it's quite a low profile card. Uh, it only takes up one slot in your chassis and the cooler doesn't protrude over that either. It's got quite a large fan there as well and the sort of heatsink design only covers sort of just over half of the card. So we've got some AMD Radeon branding on here, nice red and black fan and this is a reference design. We are going to see some other designs from uh, the likes of XFX, Sapphire, HIS, uh, Club 3D and many other brands that are on the market. But just to talk through some of the specs of this card first and foremost, uh, we're looking at 512 stream processors, uh, the engine clock speed or the core clock speed however you want to name it is 800 megahertz and then we've got the memory clock speed at 1125 megahertz. It runs on a 128-bit memory interface and it has one gigabyte of GDDR5 memory. Uh, obviously the AIBs or AMD's partners may decide to um, do their own design of this, add more memory in, but that is something that will come at a later date. But to be honest, on a card aimed at the market that this one is, um, there's not really much point having more than one gig of memory. So board power and how much this will typically use, AMD is saying that this is going to use less than 55 watts when loaded. So when you're playing the game, it shouldn't use any more than 55 watts. Once it's idle, because it has got um, obviously AMD's new technology with the zero core technology, you should see it utilizing less than three watts. And now that is with the with the display off. But for someone who's uh, 
you know, really conscious about electricity prices and things like that, three watts is a, a really, really uh, nice figure. Uh, other than that, we will sort of have a quick look around the card. There isn't really a lot to say about this card because it is really what you see is what you get. But um, let's look in a little bit further. So, as I say, we've got the cooler here with uh, quite a large fan, but it is very, very low profile. As you can see, there is the aluminium heatsink underneath. And with AMD's partners, they will do their own custom designs. There is no external power needed for this card, so they have really aimed this at everyone, as they're saying. Um, so no external power, no crossfire adapter on there either. Um, but overall, just a smart-looking card that is going to be aimed at you know people who want to do a little bit of light gaming, maybe even some Photoshop work and that kind of thing. Um, turning around and looking at the displays now, we can see that we've got um, DisplayPort over here, HDMI, and a Dual Link DVI. Now these will accept up to six displays. Obviously you can get the uh, DisplayPort uh, monitors which will daisy link or daisy chain or you can even get the DisplayPort hubs and things like that. There's loads of different possibilities with what you can do with this. Um, you can also get the HDMI to DVI adapters as well which you can buy separately. People like Sapphire may be bundling them in but at this present time we're not too sure on that. So that's basically the 7750. Uh, I can only apologise that there isn't a mass amount to say about it. It didn't come in any retail packaging or anything like that. So this is pretty much the card laid bare on its own. Uh, in the full written review, we will take the cooler off and have a look at what's underneath memory wise and um, GPU wise. So you can see how the card actually does look laid bare, so to speak. Uh, but for now, stay tuned and we'll uh, take you over to where we've actually got all the benchmark results and uh, show you how it compares against the other cards that we've uh, been testing it against.